something funky.
And from the economic, economic collapse blog.com, World War III, fighters from Turkey are pouring into Syria and attacking targets despite the ceasefire. February 29th, that's yesterday's date, the ceasefire in Syria is a joke. Turkish military units continue to mass along the border and militants are pouring across the border to attack targets in northern Syria. The Prime Minister of Turkey is now openly admitting that his government is supporting the militants that are trying to overthrow the Syrian government and the Turkish government has also made it abundantly clear that, hold on, let me make this a little bit smaller, that they have no plans to stop shelling the Kurds on the other side of the border. So despite the ceasefire, the truth is that the threat of World War III breaking out in the Middle East is greater than ever. At times, it is difficult to see the dividing line between the Turkish military and the radical jihadists that are hopping back and forth across the border with the full support of the Turkish government. Over the weekend, militants from Turkey that crossed over into northern Syria were supported by artillery fire from the Turkish military as they attacked a key Kurdish town. In the Raqqa province, a group of some 100 fighters crossed into Syria from Turkey. The group later joined forces with other militants and attacked the Kurdish town of Tel Abyad. The 250-strong group was supported by artillery fire from the Turkish territory, a fact that Russia said the U.S. should explain. The Kurdish YPG militia fended off the attack, the report said. When is Russia, or is good, or when are they going to do something? This is an act of war, and yet the Obama administration does not seem to mind. If Turkey will not even honor the ceasefire, what hope is there that anything will be able to stop them from acting so aggressively? At this point, the Turks are not even pretending anymore. Just the other day, Turkish Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu openly admitted that his nation was backing the militants that are trying to overthrow the Assad regime. How would they be able to defend themselves if there was no Turkish support of the Syrian people? If there's today a real moderate Syrian opposition, it's because of the Turkish support. If today the Assad regime isn't able to control all the territories, it's because of Turkish and some other countries' support, he told Al Jazeera earlier this week. Obviously, this ceasefire is not going to work. Turkey has not even pressed pause in their relentless campaign against the Assad regime and the Kurds. The Turkish government has become absolutely obsessed with their neighbor to the south and that is a very dangerous thing for the rest of the planet. The only way that Turkey, Saudi Arabia and their 19 other allies from South Africa are going to be able to win the war now is to conduct a massive ground invasion of Syria. Such a move would lead to direct conflict with Iran, Hezbollah, and the Russians, and since Turkey is a member of the NATO alliance, that could threaten to drag the U.S. and Western Europe into the war as well. The following comes from the International Business Times. The wider Consequences of any disagreement between Ankara and Moscow could lead to a standoff between Russia and NATO. Jen Stoltenberg, Secretary General of Brussels-based organization, said in late 2015 that it would be prepared to defend the member state of Turkey if it were attacked by Russia. Ooh, NATO will defend you. NATO is on the ground. NATO is ready. NATO, let's see, run by the global elites, the Pope, and it's the Pope that's calling the Muslims our brothers and sisters and that we need to welcome them into our country. Well, that makes perfect sense. Doesn't it? The 28 country alliance. Wait, wait a minute. NATO will defend you, yes. And then it says Turkish airspace by Russian jets and just one month before. Yeah. Repeated. Sorry. Jen Stoltenberg said in the aftermath of repeated breaches of Turkish airspace by Russian jets in just one month before Ankara shot down a Russian jet in November. The 28-country alliance is bound by Article 5 of its treaty to collectively defend its members. Collective defense means that an attack against one ally is considered as an attack against all allies. The article states, Saudi Arabia does not appear ready to back down either. The Saudis continue to reiterate their position that either Assad must go peacefully or he will be removed by force. 
Saudi Arabia is prepared to send troops to Syria if President Bashar Assad doesn't resign and leave his war-torn nation peacefully. Well, you can see where Obama is on this. He's all he's he's on the side of Turkey. He's on the side of Saudi Arabia and the other 19 countries because he ain't doing nothing. But at the same time, you know, uh, the the opposition is uh, Putin and uh, Iran and Syria, of course. Saudi Foreign Minister Abdel Al Jabir warned Sunday that his country will take military action if Syria violates the terms of a ceasefire agreement. I believe that abiding by the truce would be an important indicator of the seriousness to reach a peaceful solution to the Syrian crisis that would include setting up a transitional council and the transfer of power from Bashar to this council, he said during a joint press conference with his Danish counterpart Christian Jensen in the Saudi capital of Riyadh. Al Jabir warned that Saudi Arabia has prepared a plan B if the coalition decided to send ground troops into Syria, Saudi Arabia is ready to contribute, he said. The goal since 2011 has been to get rid of Assad so that Syria could become a full-fledged Sunni nation with Sunni government. Yeah, and, and who led up that goal? Who's the one who started it? Barry Satoro, our infamous president. Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and their allies have poured enormous amounts of money and resources into this conflict, and they don't appear to be willing to walk away now that the tide of the war has turned. In fact, how the Saudis have been behaving lately has been causing a tremendous amount of anxiety in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia's recent actions have caused a great deal of anxiety within its region. On February 4th, a military spokesman suggested that Saudi Arabia was ready to send troops, ground troops, to fight ISIS in Syria. A week later, Saudi Arabia announced that it will send combat aircraft and soldiers to Turkey to participate in the U.S.-led coalition against ISIS. Three days later, the Saudis launched Northern Thunder, described as the largest military exercise in the history of the Middle East. Participants from 20 countries sent troops to the maneuvers run over three weeks in Hafar al-Batin in northern Saudi Arabia, not far from the Iraqi and Kuwaiti border. According to a Saudi media outlet, some 350,000 troops were expected to participate in the maneuvers. So if Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and their allies are preparing for war, then what is the purpose of the ceasefire? Well, first of all, the goal was to stop the bleeding. The Sunni militants were losing ground steadily, and this pause will enable them to regroup and get resupplied. Secondly, this pause in the action gives the coalition time to move forces into position for a potential ground evasion of Syria. But more than anything else, the ceasefire seems to be a trap. It appears to be inevitable that the U.S. and other Western powers will accuse Russia, Iran, Hezbollah, and Syrian government of breaking the ceasefire, thus providing legal justification for the coalition to militarily intervene. Watch developments in Syria very closely. Many had hoped that this ceasefire would bring the five-year civil war to an end, but the truth is that it could just be setting the stage for something far, far bigger. U.S. war fleet within strike range of North Korea ready for WW-3 and Armada of American warships, led by the nuclear aircraft carrier USS Carl Vinson, is now within range of the Hermit Kingdom. Donald Trump sent the Carl Vinson, guided missile cruiser USS Lake Champlain, and guided missile destroyers USS Michael Murphy and USS Wayne e. Meyer to stop Kim Jong-un testing a new nuclear weapon or ballistic missile The group is now in the Philippine Sea, just east of the Japanese island of Okinawa, and is within striking range of North Korea. The Navy fleet will continue north over the coming days. U.S. Navy Admiral Harry Harris, the top U.S. Pacific commander, said the group was standing by in strike range and power projection range of North Korea, if called upon to do that. The fleet practiced for war with North Korea with a series of military drills yesterday. U.S. allies South Korea and Japan surrounded North Korea with joint exercises on both sides of the Korean Peninsula. 
the Carl Vinson's Air Wing trained with the Japanese Air Force in the sea south of Japan. The Wayne Meyer carried out exercises with South Korean Navy ship Wangian in the Yellow Sea, between China and Korea, on Tuesday. The Lake Champlain and Michael Murphy stayed with the Carl Vinson. Another destroyer, the USS Fitzgerald trained with the Japanese destroyer the JS Chakai in the Sea of Japan, between Korea and Japan. The Donald boasted the US was sending an armada of ships to sort out Crazy Kim earlier this month. He said. We are sending an armada. Very powerful. But he was left red-faced when the Carl Vinson strike group was spotted 3,500 miles away near Indonesia. Admiral Harris has taken the blame for the blunder. He told Congress. I'll take the hit for it. Where I failed was to communicate that adequately to the press and the media, so that's all on me. Thank you for watching, please subscribe Hot News TV channel, goodbye and see you again.